session is a glaucoma session and the first speaker is Professor Reinhard Berg. He's the head of the High Eye Clinic in Bielefeld. His focus is on glaucoma surgery, retinal and vitreous surgery and corneal surgery. And um, before I welcome him, his talk will be about glaucoma monitoring by Spectralis OCT. Yeah, welcome to Heidelberg. Thank you for the invitation. So, uh, as a potential blinding disease, we have to monitor glaucoma carefully, of course. And at acute stages, um, like this one here, immediate action, such as surgical intervention, is mandatory. These are central scans and a temporal scan uh, of an anterior segment OCT in a protracted angle closure glaucoma with IOP up to 57. Posterior sclerotomy and a lens exchange is, of course, the treatment of choice. All our therapeutic efforts uh, advance. Now, are, of course, to preserve functions, and the best way to preserve function is to preserve structure. In our daily clinical routine, we monitor glaucoma by assessing the peripapillary retinal nerve fiber layer, the minimum rim width as proposed by Balchohan and Claude Bourgoin, based on both membrane opening and evaluate the retinal thickness at the posterior pole. Typical reference in children are kids with macro discs, like this five-year-old. A physiologic macro disc has to have topometric data readings at least in the magnitude of normal healthy discs. And at the follow-up visit, after 42 months, all parameters are stable. As an example here, the parapapillary RNFL. Ocular hypertension, of course, has to be monitored, but needs no therapy as long as topometric data and functional tests remain stable. Besides other methods, the rim width in this left eye and in the right eye show only minor variation. But the risk of conversion in ocular hypertension is indeed real. After 54 months of control elsewhere, here are significant changes noticeable. And in this towards glaucoma converted eye, the posterior pole scan shows a um, thickness reduction of the retina and in the posterior pole scan the orange color of the macula coated thickness has decreased. What about advanced glaucoma? Should we Heidelberg all discs with this appearance already? Does it make any sense? Yes, as long as you get good image quality it makes sense. Structural monitoring then is useful. Almost no structure is left, but here you see the slide shows the minimal rim width over time. The arrow indicates um, the time point when the patient agreed to surgical intervention. This is a problem in. Uh, the uh, sac segmentation of the retina. If eyes are of less quality, this may be problematic, but um, even here, the same eye is useful if good image quality can be attained. Once more, the time point where the patient agreed for surgical intervention. That's the retina scale. and the posterior pole in this very advanced glaucoma. These are disc photos from a highly scared patient with usual acuity of 0.7 in the right and 0.8 in the left eye. The structural and functional situation is up to now stable after surgery. However, the measurement frequency as required by the patient represents patient's fear. And for this patient, 
the data display on the monitor is of utmost importance. It's psychologically uh, very useful for the patient to see that not only his vision, but the um, objective measurements are the same over time. What about layer segmentation? The retina thickness is clinically useful, but comparatively rough measure. So why not go for sub-segmentation and further layer investigation? For research purposes, um, the sublayer like retinal ganglion cell or a combination like inner retinal layers may be useful. In daily clinical routine, we, we have less or little time, um, the retinal thickness helps as an overview and the posterior pulse scale shows immediate at one glance what happened over time. But see what may happen. Here in the 70 month blood period, the inner retinal layers display a reduction of minus eight microns. This finding is missed when we look at the whole retina. They have an elevation centrally of plus seven microns. So what's the reason for this? In the meantime of the observation period, the patient developed a pseudo-vitoliform macular degeneration, which of course disturbs these readings. Monitoring is especially useful in juvenile glaucoma. This is a minimum rim width over time from the year 17 on when BMO scan models with APS became available. The complete follow-up of this patient is 113 months. The situation is reasonably well controlled after surgery at first show at age of 13 with the disc I showed you before. The retinal nerve fiber layer are both diffuse and localized defects of special interest. Cameras were changed in the follow-up period and only subtle structural changes may be detected on these disc photos. However, the OCT manufacturer was not changed. The global RNFL slope is minus 0.8. However, in the temporal inferior octant, the slope is minus 2.3, significantly steeper. And if you look at the reflectivity image, the brilliance loss in the surface is obvious. The retina scale and the posterior pulse scale show the retinal thing is which developed over time. This is a special finding in a normal tangent glaucoma disc, independent, very important, independent from retinal, retinal traction. A pronounced reflectivity loss, temporal superior, is associated with the swelling and disintegration of the retinal nerve fiber layer. The pre-existing broad bundle defect temporal inferior is accompanied by a surface elevation at the site of the RNFL disintegration temporal superior at the site with pronounced reflectivity loss. Followed by a typical RNFL bundle defect within the next six months. Now, it's standard to assess the RNFL and the minimum rim width in monitoring glaucoma. 
should we evaluate the macular scans as well routinely? And for this eye, is it a glaucoma eye? The RFL looks quite good. And the minimum rim width in 12, 14, up to 11, 17, is within normal limits, statistically. But of course, the change is easily be detected. For the first time, the temporal inferior border was marked borderline in 11, 2018. But the macular scan was already pathologic in April 2011. That's a posterior pulse scan, which shows the ongoing glaucoma damage and the retinal thickness scan. These are the blue fields over time. And the percentage scotoma in the left eye was symptomatic early on. I didn't show you the left eye, I showed you just the pseudo normal right eye. And almost progression um, in the structural parameters convinced the patient to accept therapy. Thus, imaging helps even in surgical intervention to increase therapy. These are two anterior segment scans where you see a gel scan in local. And if the patient understands what happened, he may understand what you offer him as post-operative treatment. So to conclude, since high quality imaging was available by OCT scans, the quality of um, our monitoring has reached a new level. And as long as image quality is good, um, I'm convinced that therapeutic options can be based on structural data. Thanks a lot. much for this absolutely fantastic long-term progressions that uh, that's really amazing and the first question already points in exactly that direction the question is what is better to follow up a patient minimal rim width or the good old retinal nerve fiber layer thickness what do you think oh i think with um the um, um glaucoma module with the um, minimal rim width, you have these three retinal scans in different differences, distances from the disc as well. So if you have access to the um, BMO software, you get the um, retinal nerve fiber layer automatically with it. Um, just to make the small peripapillary um, scan is a very easy and still useful method we have the data with the rim bits only since 2014 and the other one for uh, the beginning of the system. So um, from now on, uh, keep going what you did before if you have the BMO software, but if you can afford to um, achieve this one, uh, go for it. Thank you. Uh, a second question, and I ask for a brief answer, would be, um, is there any tips or tricks how to distinguish uh, um, more neurologic uh, neuropathies of neurological origin from glaucomatous ones? Yes, yes, definitely. So the, the typical changes, what we see in glaucoma are changes in the RNFL and the temporal superior and temporal inferior bundle areas, whilst if the peripapillary um, uh, retinal nerve fiber layer scan shows um, major signs in the temporal macular bundle, um, then it's uh, most likely to be from other causes than glaucoma. 
So um, the tracheal quadrant, that's the one the, which uh, highlights the urological or other problems, while the temporal superior and temporal inferior octants are these uh, glaucoma special uh, fields. Yeah. Can you say a number? What is the optimal monitoring interval? Oh, th this heavily depends on the patient's situation. So if you have like a child in a macro disc, you should not te terrorize the uh, parents. It's okay if they show up once more after three years or five years, if everything's fine. If you have an ocular hypertensive who is from general health and the structure is good, maybe you discuss with him to show up within two years. But if you have a very uh, instable glaucoma patient where you see progression uh, at even three months may be adequate. That's really to decide on an individual basis. Can you mention a number? What is a normal p-value? Uh, a normal progression. p-value, what? Pro progression, it's, oh, you must, p-value is statistically, if you had a point, one percentage or point five percentage, um, it's a, it, mu it must be statistically significant. You, you see this in the out borders uh, on the display, you see the slope and you see the um, significant level, uh, the Boeing um, concave and the Boeing convex inferior. And if you look at these two, you see how the variability within these um, scale is. To my point of view, it's more important not to look at the slope number as such, but to see whether the slope changes. For instance, if we succeed in stabilizing the disease process and um, have an horizontal line in the follow-up for the last years, we still have a minus uh, slope value. That's not a p-value, it's a minus value within, with respect to microns, that's the uh, uh, unit. Uh, with microns, you will ever have, if he started to get worse, you have a, always a minus slope. But if you have a minus slope, let's say for the first three years, and then after surgery or whatever, you uh, have a tricky um, therapeutics. If it's that stable, that's an important thing. Just cut up um, and look what happened within the next, this is the last time period. Okay, thank you very much for. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs> yes, that 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 uh, answered the question. Uh, at least the the guest says. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you to Bielefeld for your.